quality of, of yarn in the local textile industry. We are going to be producing the finest cotton yarn in the world. We are going to be able to do that quickly. But couldn't you have done it cheaper elsewhere? You can always do things cheaper, but this is about quality. This is about the heritage. This is about provenance and bringing it home. That's what really matters. Now, a single floor of the automated spinning machines can be operated by three people instead of 60. Here's the raw material, Californian cotton, and this machine takes a little bit off each bale and blends it together. Christy Ashton spent a lifetime in textiles, but never cotton spinning. What does it feel like to have started working just recently yourself in a cotton mill? Exciting. Really? Exciting. What work? Yeah, because my parents was in the cotton mill and I think my grandfather was in the cotton mill. Mm. Now I'm going through, hopefully I can pass this on to my generation. <laughs> the cotton itself that you handle it, that's, that's fairly very, fragile. Very fine, yeah, very fine. You do need nimble fingers. Well, I can tie a very fine line on a hook for fishing. Okay. So, I should be alright, shouldn't I? Yeah. Good. This intermediate stage called rolling is put through this ring spinning machine, which has a compacting component. It squeezes the fibres together, and that's what gives it very high quality. And this is what comes out. A thousand metres of this stuff weighs only four grams. In its heyday, the region boasted almost 2,000 mills. It also employed thousands of migrant workers, including Manhal Agrafal. For him, it's a welcome return to cotton. Since the industry died, so there is, it's very difficult to find experienced operators. It's a big opportunity for young generation to learn old skill with new way, okay. with new technique. From an old timer like yourself. Yes, <laughs> This is the end of the whole camp, but this process is called final winding. And this machine's actually got an eye, a little camera. And if it spots any imperfections in the thread, it whips them out and slices the two ends back together. And that's what you end up with. I know it's a business video, I'm little time for emotion or sensitive, but is it important to you that you've brought this industry back to its traditional home? Oh, it's, it's, it, it's vital to us. You know, if it wasn't for the staff and if it wasn't for the people around this region, we wouldn't be able to do this. So here it is. And this corn is going off to make luxury tailor-made shirts, each of which will cost about £650, which is a hundred times more than a pair for one of mine. For now, this is going to remain a fairly niche industry, but it's great to see the first British cotton that's been spun for decades, and in its traditional form. It's wonderful to see the industry is back, but what a shame the 650 quid a shirt. You won't be having one of those on this one. I country. certainly won't. No, um, won't. But it's a shame, isn't it, because Andy usually has his dog Buster Very in his films, which I'm sure yeah. Nigel would have enjoyed, but no sign yeah. of Nigel in the, um, no sign of, what's his name? Buster. 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 Buster in the cotton mill. No. no. Well, let's have a chat about Nigel, because Nigel really oh. is, the, is the reason for the new book. Nigel, my family and other dogs. Yeah, I wrote this book because Nigel gets a lot of attention. Yes. And people are endlessly writing to me, letters, Christmas cards, presents. They bore me much more than me. And having spent sort of 30 years trying to be
and I watched him, and all, all, everyone found the excuse to go and talk to him, and they drew, he drew them in. He didn't go and he wasn't his charisma. Charisma. It was just he drew them in. Oh.